Anime 2023 Giga got us a new video. It's time to farm. Let's see what he has to say. Well, it's that time again. Another year has passed us by, and with okay. it has gone another year of anime. We got good shows, we got bad shows, but the real question. Wait, is, wait, wait! Did, 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 did. We got good shows. Wait. Year of anime. We got good. Frieden, good show. Good shows. We got bad. Is that cheap skill in another world? Shows, but I can't tell. Maybe. The real question is, what are the moments that are going to be remembered? Yeah. Eminence and Shadow, baby. Ooh. Yo, is this a new intro? Yo, is this a new intro for me? 2023 was a year dominant. Because usually he always has that other like Japanese pop thing that plays during the intro, right? I feel like he actually changed the music here, right? I'm not crazy, right? By absolute heavyweight shows just he changed it, yeah. Over. Anime seemed inescapable whether you were a fan or not. Successful live action adaptations. <laughs> legendary. Okay, the One Piece live action. I'm not sure if you guys seen this. I heard it was fucking amazing. I heard it was actually pretty good for what it was. Yes, live action animes never translate well, but because the material is about pirates and it's not some magical Japanese high school setting with a bunch of high, you know, high school students, somehow I heard that the live action translation actually made sense for like a Western audience because you know it's fucking pirates and shit. Legendary series coming to an end. Memes, so many memes. It feels like the influence of a handful of shows have truly seeped into mainstream pop culture okay. and only really continues to grow from there. The most memes I see is um the fucking Jujutsu Kaisen not I'd win. It still happens, dude. That <laughs> Joe Goat. <laughs> I mean. Because Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen aired for such a long time, right? I mean, now nah, Idwin was fucking everywhere. Well, there were still some other things happening around our little sphere. Anime fans continued to find any opportunity to complain about CG. This time, even Demon Slayer was catching strays with viewers. Just one second, just one second. God damn it. Worst fucking timing. The Demon Slayer CG, the fish, I think, right? It was the upper rank versus uh, the water dude. Complaining about how these fishes look like an absolute joke. How dare any animation... Honestly, just looking at this like CGI fish right now from uh, Ufotable, it looks so fucking good compared to the other CG that we've seen. Like, holy shit. Look how crisp the CGI is. How these fishes look like an absolute... I will take that CGI, dude. I, if, the, if, like, if the monsters in Arifurata were replaced with this, I would have been very happy. Joke. How dare any animation studio consider this acceptable quality they cried. Meanwhile, in Isekai land... <laughs> this is Kamikatsu, right? This is straight up Kamikatsu, right? Hey, this what's what up? Peak CGI looks like. Takashi drew two lines and got 44 million views, 400 likes, 100,000 views. <laughs> That's right, Hunter x Hunter author came back and tweeted some shit. It just fucking two lines, 44 million views. Tweets. Meanwhile, I'm out here drawing at least eight lines and I'm still waiting for Shonen Jump to hit me up with that manga deal. One Piece defied all odds by giving us a live action adaptation that didn't. So Let's go. The Jujutsu Kaisen fan base came together to collectively say, nah. I'd win, which is what yes. I think they say when they enter a contest of who can more effectively spoil their fucking Dude, the amount of spoilers is fucking insane. I had to go out of my way to just block every keyword, block every buzzword on like TikTok, Twitter, because like anytime some random kid just comes at you with a random picture of a panel of a manga that just spoils you. And it's like, sometimes there isn't even words on that post. There's no hashtags. It's just the fucking manga panel. It still gets recommended. It's like, what the fuck? Series. But they would probably win against this random dude from Marshall. I. This is him. Giga himself voice acted in Mashley, right? Yeah, this is him right now. I'm Rhodes Amos. I mean, look it at him. He lost like two seconds. Who the hell? Is like, I don't know. You would think that a guy like Giga would be able to secure a role that is not a mob character in Mash, right? Am I crazy? Don't you think he has that much clout? But then again, he is like an amateur voice actor, right? So it's like, what are you gonna do? You play a character like that. It's probably some dumbass hack. For real though, it's been ten years now since I've been doing these yearly anime recaps. I have ten years. A bloody decade of anime, and the. Oh, maybe he changed the intro because this is like his decades, you know, worth of work, huh? A lot has changed during that time. I can only imagine the wild things that were happening in 2013 back then. Hayao Miyazaki finishes his latest feature film, The Wind Rises, just before announcing his retirement from filmmaking at the ripe young age of about 197 years old. That maybe, a ho maybe a hot take, but isn't this the guy that's just always fucking just upset and mad and just angry? Yes, he's delivered some fantastic, legendary, iconic movies, but like... Isn't this guy just so, like, such a fucking angry boomer?
That was a fucking lie. There are a lot of shows that didn't make my list this year. Not because they weren't good, but because I didn't have much to say about them other than it was good. Hell's Paradise was fun. So was Mash. Mid's Paradise. Just kidding. I don't know. Hell's Paradise, it felt like it should have been fucking great. Right? It was all action and battle, but for some reason, I felt like there's there a disconnect between me and the and my community watching it. Probably because y'all motherfuckers didn't enjoy it because it's an isekai. Sure. It's not so an isekai. Undead unlocked. One day, I'm sure the West will appreciate Umamusume as much as Asia does. <laughs> this is an anime all about just furry girls running, racing. It's, it's a horse racer gambling on horse racing, but it's like horse girls. <laughs> Today is not that day. Mushoku Tensei <laughs> continued my favorite isekai story of all time, but how ah, many yes. ago? I cannot get it up. People have been trashing. Bro, an entire fucking season dedicated towards fixing his goddamn erectile dysfunction. And you know what? It was pretty good. It was enjoyable. Like, this kind of goes to show how great of a show Mushoku Tensei is. That it can just deliver on a season that people will watch every episode. Just, and the viewership will be damn good. Even though we're not, like, doing crazy turning point shit. Even though we're not doing crazy fights. It's just straight up just dumbass. You know, it's just a Viagra arc. Rudy, left, right, and center. But I think he's proved he's a real gentleman by showing that he never, ever raises his sword at a girl. All right, let's get to my favorite show. Rudy Jr., the sword is not rising. Yeah, but before we do, a quick word from my sponsor. The Spoke oh. Post. The Spoke Post. Raid Shadow Legends, y'all know what to do. Use the discount code cash hashtag gig. Anyways, back to the regular content. What a fucking disappointment of an anime. Not that because the anime is bad. But the scheduling just ruined the hype and any momentum that weekly watchers had for this show. This show started off so amazing. In fact, the first episode, you know, the theme of the first episode was, you know, fucking corporations that suck the living soul out of you to the point that you would prefer a zombie apocalypse than being a corporal slave in Japan. And like, it just kind of means on the fucking work culture. And like, it was great. He escaped it. And then what happens? The fucking studio that runs this shit, unironically, is the same fucking corpo that does that shit, resulting in many fucking scheduled delays. It fucking sucks what happened to this man. The zombie genre is probably one of the most saturated and overdone genres you can find in any I still love entertainment it. media. I still love zombies. About 10 years ago. Yet somehow in 2023, we still got an entirely fresh and original take on it in ZOM 100. ZOM 100 tells the sad story. Of mapper employees overworked <laughs> and undervalued by the company overlords that run their lives it takes an entire zombie apocalypse for a key attender to start living the life he should have this show felt like a personal call out for anyone who's mm -hmm. ever worked a dead-end job in their lives and has daydreamed of something anything. like like if, if you are in like that i don't know that 22 to like 26 like age where maybe you're like uh graduated college and you're just getting into your first job and you kind of realize that holy shit life after school it's just the same thing over and over and over and there's no escape. That kind of starts to fuck with your head. So this show definitely is related for a lot of uh, new uh, office slaves. Thing ...happening to take away their responsibility out of their hands, even if that thing is the end of the world. Akira personifies that feeling of pure freedom we all secretly wish we had. That feeling that breaks the shackle of responsibility of having to go to work, of having to wake up for school the next day. Mm -hmm. Aaron Yeager looks at him and goes, fuck that guy, which is embodied in one of the most impressive opening episodes all year where you could feel that every single person working on it channeled their passionate hatred of all the previous employers that had ever wronged them <laughs> what they fucking inherited the hatred of the previous employers <laughs> but like here's the thing the first episode i'm, I'm not sure if this is a, a fact i've heard online surely people don't lie online but um i heard the first episode was intentionally cracked and then the couple episodes after, and I did notice the quality significantly reduced, And but obviously you want to have good impressions, right? Fortunately, it felt like a lot of the hype got taken away, largely due to episode releases being plagued with constant yes, delays the schedules. and supposed production issues. Oh, hey, Bullshit! Even though the show lost some steam as it went on and was tonally a bit... I see what you did there. ...and supposed production issues. Oh, yeah. Hey, you look at that? Even though the show... Steam? I see a lot of steam, all right. It lost some steam as it went on and was tonally a bit all over the place at times. It was still a fun little show I think anyone could enjoy because mm -hmm. in this day and age where it feels like people are fighting tooth and nail just to survive, I think a lot of us could use a story about one man yes. reminding us all how to live. Be free. Number 12 is... Oh? A hundred girlfriends? Girlfriend ah, shit. Love you, come along, and personally made sure 
that it never will be. Well, okay. How does this even still make sense? The age gap? Mom? Anyways. This is the story of a man who got rejected so many times, who had such negative riz. God took pity and gave him a hundred different girls he had to date or they'd all die. This was Bro literally failed a hundred times, hit the fucking pity, now he gets a hundred girlfriends. Like, that's the deal. Like watching someone dying of thirst in the desert, so then God goes, Alright, I've got a solution. I'm listening. Just fucking drown him. But what God didn't plan for is that he chose someone who could chug the ocean dry and still have room for more. 100 Girlfriends has a concept so dumb, it would need to be as batshit crazy as its own premise to even have a chance at Dude. making it work. And that's exactly why it does. It's stupid. It's unhinged. It knows exactly how insane it is and then runs with it 10 kilometers past where it needed to go but see this is the type of rom-com i love dumb rom-coms where it focuses on calm more than rom when it's too dramatic when it's too focused on rom things get a little bit too cheesy and heavy and it's like fuck i'm trying to watch anime to like get away from my own problems i don't want to get depressed but like really fun cracked rom-coms like a hundred girlfriend kaguya sama Tomo-chan is a girl. I think they're fantastic. Hinge. It knows exactly how insane it is and then runs with it 10 kilometers past where mm -hmm. it needed to go. By all means, this show shouldn't have worked if we didn't have the greatest harem protagonist to bring it all together. <laughs> yeah. Bro just protected him from getting, you know, groped there. Yes, we were Grace with the apex of boyfriends. The part <laughs> that she tells you not to worry about. He may look like the most unthreatening guy possible, but watch him be like, don't worry, I come in peace. Hi, what's your name? Peace. I come in peace. It's rare for me to laugh at a comedy anime, and even rarer when it comes to lowbrow harem rom-coms, but 100 Girlfriends was a showcase of how to do a parody correctly. Reinforced by Bibbury Animation Studio doing a bang-up job selling all of these jokes in the anime adaptation. They went above and beyond, and I can't wait to see how they adapt the manga beyond the- Whoa, whoa, wait, what, what, why are you all running away? What's happening? Oh, yeah, I keep seeing this panel. I keep seeing that. And season two is confirmed. Season two is confirmed. So we're going to have it. I'm not sure when, but pretty soon. Number 11 is an anime that I don't recognize. In the minds of anime fans, yeah. 3D animation comes oh. in two tiers. There's the Berserk 2016 oh. tier, a show so disastrous it has stopped oh. the anime community from 3D anime to this day. And then there's this, the aesthetic that looks like one of those games I apparently won't what last five shit? seconds playing. The real ones know though that Studio Orange has been out here creating their own tier. Every project they seem to continually push themselves, one-up themselves, and okay. Trigun Stampede is their best looking show. Trigun is a very old anime, right? Never watched it, but Trigon Stampede, is this like a remake? Like a little, like, is, is this like a sequel? What, what is this shit? Yet. Not just with some of the jaw-dropping action sequences and camera work, but small micro-expressions and camera animation that give their work just a bit more life. They are yeah. still continuing to push the boundary of what is possible in a- th The animation just based off of these clips don't look too bad. In fact, it might even make sense to have it like this for this kind of show. I don't know. It's like everything is consistent, right? It's not just like 2D here and then 3D. It's like everything is 3D. So it looks pretty good. 3D anime in every way possible. When I got the lucky opportunity to talk to a producer at Studio Orange, he called oh, themselves the sh hentai of the anime industry. And, <laughs> what? Well, that. What does that even mean? You're the hentai of the anime industry? You're, you're just a separate just NSFW just content? Well, I, I guess... I guess if, if, if everyone's doing 2D and you're doing 3D shit and you kind of get like labeled that way. It's pretty accurate because what they've done with Trigun Full CG Stampede studio? Is bricked up. All right, okay. Uh, how's the show? Is it good? Trigun is one of the most beloved anime from the old school Adult Swim era. And when you take on the mantle of rebooting a franchise like this, you always have to contend with picky fans. Straight up remake. Every little change in detail. That's just bounty is way smaller. Like straight up 3D remake. Oh, I see, I see. He has a different haircut, different gun. Character designs that looks like this now look like this. Huh. Now where have I seen this aesthetic before? Oh. The spaghetti western feel takes a back seat to fully flesh out a hard sci-fi story. It's more dark, more gritty. One of my favorite things from the original being Vash and Wolfwood's epic buddy cop dynamic feels a tad more intense. I'll skin you alive and play with your bones until you're begging to die. You got that story. Jesus. Okay. Wolfwood. Make no mistake, this okay. is an entirely new Trigun. But one thing I can always respect is when a reboot tries to do something different that the original didn't already do. And by the end of the season, it becomes abundantly clear what all these changes were leading up to. And God what damn, is it? did it leave me wanting more. In a time where I feel like we're getting starved of good, hard science fiction anime, this has to be one of the most unique and interesting sci-fi worlds we've seen in years. And I honestly think the way things are set up, it has the chance to do even more than the original did if it gets future seasons. When 
people okay. remember Trigon, they say, oh yeah, Trigon. I freaking loved Trigon. But if you ask them before that, what they recommended we go back and watch, Cowboy Bebop, Full Metal Alchemist. Trigon has always been on that- I ain't gonna lie, I haven't seen any of these fucking old enemies, man. Second or third echelon of recommendations behind the classics. And I fully believe that with what Studio Orange have set up with this season, it has the potential to go up to this tier. All right. Top 10 starts now. Oh shit. Oshinoko. Last year that exploded onto the scene as fast as Oshinoko did. Yes. Our hearts were torn to shred in a tragic 90 minute opening episode. Bro, a new match was formed. This was fucked. I straight up, I had the video ready to play to just like record for the night, but I thought it was like a standard like 20 minute video. And I, and I wasn't paying attention. I just played play and I kept watching. And I'm like, where are we going with this? I'm like, yo, this is taking a long time. And I look at, and I look at the fucking duration. I'm like, wait, what hour 20 minutes? What the fuck is this episode? Anime company saw the feature length opening premiere and said, wait, you can do that? Yeah, you can. The Everybody's doing it now. The very first Japanese song to top the global... This is, I believe, the rise of this band. I'm sorry if I mispronounced it. Yua Zobi, right? I think... um. From this moment onwards, everyone's just talking about it. They're getting every new anime openings and endings, right? Before this, were they even popular? They probably were, but not as big, right? I feel like Oshinoko opening kind of pushed it over the edge. Billboard 100 charts. The people of my anime list came together and went, Fuck you, Fullmetal Alchemist, this- Okay, but every time we do this on the my anime list, right? FMA fucking brigade, the Discord pings go out, they're fucking biannual Discord pings. Uh-oh, another anime has topped their rankings. Brotherhood, go, brigade, brigade, then it drops down. Then what happens? Freedom made it onto the number one list, right? This is the greatest anime ever made. Then everyone remembered there was an entire rest of the show you needed to watch. This the yes. plot of Oshinoko is like, all right, so there's a doctor who- So, I- the, the common consensus that I've been hearing, at least on random comments from TikTok, because on the YouTube side, like, people enjoyed it, but I feel like episode one was definitely the shock and the hook, and people wanted the murder revenge story, but not a lot of people were too down for the idol part of the story, so a lot of people were kind of disappointed about every episode after episode one, if you know what I'm saying, right? I still enjoy the entire story because... I just like the understanding, like, the, the inner, the darkness, the, the underground idol, you know, industry, stuff like that. But a lot of people didn't seem to appreciate this after episode one. He's a huge fan of this one idol. Then and it turns this out that idol girl like, shows up at the hospital pregnant. Then, then, then it turns out he gets baby born as that person. This baby son comes back and born as that person as well. Maybe the same choice in the same hospital than the car. He's really traumatic. Anyways, we're like an isekai character. We got reincarnated as a baby of the idol that we're kind of having a crush on, but we're like a doctor and he's kind of old and he died, but the body was never found. So who was a stabber? I don't really know. And then the baby, but then the, the hospital says, anyways, it's a great show. You should watch it. So it's an idol anime? No. Yeah. Sometimes Oshinoko is a victim of this own insane premise. Like, I don't even know if I fully understand this main character. A grown ass idol obsessed man who gets reincarnated as the son of the girl he idolized yeah. and grows yeah. up being obsessed with his now mum and any other girl who even remotely reminds him of her. Like, if I call him a mum. <sighs> it's not even incest, but it's. It's, it, it is and it isn't, you know, fuck, I don't even know. He's more likely to say fuck you or yes, please. Here's a feed of Sigmund Freud's grave right now. But behind <laughs> all that, the show shines as this interesting, no bullshit Instagram filters off look at the Japanese entertainment industry, mm -hmm. showing you what really happens behind those closed doors when the cameras are turned off. I mm. hate the media! This was the show that tricked everyone into thinking they were watching another idol anime, when yes, in reality it was baited. almost the complete opposite. It's murder mystery! The true thing, single-handedly elevating the reputation of idol fans in 2023, is the sheer existence of Aoi Todo. With how popular this got, I find it interesting how much I heard this title being thrown around last year, when most people saying it probably didn't even know what an Oshinoko is. See, in Japanese, Oshi- Is it an Oshi, basically, in VTuber land, right? I think the term Oshi is, like, basically, like- the person that you support the most, right? It's like your streamer, your like uh, your VTuber, you know? It, it's like that idol that you support the most, right? So I think Oshinoko is like my idol. She means a person who I support, and in yeah. idol culture is normally used to refer to someone's favorite idol. So the term Oshinoko has a clever double meaning that could be my favorite idol or my idol's children, which both perfectly oh, describe I see. So basically, what I'm trying to say is Oshis are worshipped in idol fandom in the same way that Taylor Swift has become the Jesus for white women. <laughs> 
Yo, Taylor Swift, she is single-handedly carrying the fucking NFL right now. A billion-dollar corporation is on its knees for Taylor Swift. This is pretty out of topic, but right now with the trends, with the amount of viewership and the fucking ticket sales that woman generates, wherever she has a concert, that country's fucking economy goes up because of her influence. It's fucking insane. Also, she's turning 35, implying she could run for president now. Number nine is... I am... Atomiku! Yeah! That's right! That's Saying our anime, baby! Guy, it feels a bit like saying you're a fan of British food. People think you're consuming the most bland, tasteless piece of garbage the world has ever yes. seen. But sometimes yes. I have a friend come visit. I love it. I, I love all the trashy generic isekais. Give me more. Give me more. And I know people are very upset because if you look at my anime, uh, if you look at my community tab and you look at the, the polls, yet again, another shitty isekai has prevailed over all these other pretentious elite shows that only sophisticated people watch, right? Nah. Random trash isekai number 37 wins the poll again. Let's go. Visit and they have a taste of a proper full English breakfast, a perfectly cooked Sunday roast. They try some of our Cornish pasties, our crisps, and it's like, damn, this is yeah. pretty good, actually. That is okay. my eminence in shadow. This takes every single trashy cliche tropes you scoff at in isekai and wears mm -hmm. it like a badge of honor. Yes, embraces it. An army of girls in his harem, blatant power fantasy, nonsensical plot lines, cheesy dialogue, boobs. You know it shouldn't work. The plot line honestly is kind of deep though. Like if you kind of just like watch this, just kind of laughing and not paying attention, you don't really have to care about the plot and it'll probably seem like a meme to you. But if you actually go into the fine details, it is a really well written story. But it wears it all so proudly, you start getting convinced that it's actually cool. It's not that it isn't stupid. It is stupid, but it doesn't it is. give a fuck if you care or not. <laughs> It's so stupid that it became cool. I thought this would eventually run its course until I kept watching and realized that this has a more interesting plot and better world building than yes. 90% of isekai. Yes! That actually says less than you think. Oh, that's a lot of isekai. Which ones have we seen here? This is vending machine. This is... Yo, this one top, top row, the second one, that was... So fucking knit at sometimes. That's your fucking cave. And then in the top left is... I got a cheese skillet from another world. Honestly, it wasn't bad. It was honestly kind of fun at times, if, especially when he didn't focus on like the fight scenes, but rather focused on like the earth, like human interactions and everyone thinking, oh my God, he's so hot now. Bottom left is, I have no clue, but there's a lot of more isekais for us to watch, guys. For as self-aware as it is, it spares no expense in building up this fully fleshed out world with so many moving parts. Every new arc, you see the mm -hmm. dominoes being perfectly laid out. It's all set up for Sid to come in and top with them on the biggest stage possible. Yes. And even though you know it's happening, when the moment comes, it delivers every single time. This was the most fun I had with any show all year. And just when I think the plot has nowhere else to go, season two ends with a world-shaking development Actually crazy. Season 2 ended on the craziest revelation. I don't want to spoil it, but they're going to have a fucking movie dedicated towards this, bro. I feel like Eminence Shadow probably was my favorite anime to watch in 2023. Now, it's a little bit skewed because if you're making, you know, content on YouTube for anime reactions, obviously, whatever performs the best is going to skew your um, perception of the anime. But <laughs> I want, I'd like to say that even if this wasn't my best performing anime series, that... This is probably definitely in my top five, at least. That made me go, fuck! One more isekai doing this! I guess what I'm trying to say is, I really watch miss it. Greg's. I really miss Greg's. Is that a reference I don't get? I guess what I'm trying to say is, I really miss Greg's. Whatever. Number eight. Oh, attack on Titan. One man's freedom is another man. But like, wait. <laughs> genocide <laughs> one man's freedom is another man's genocide true Aaron Yeager but I heard that the ending was very controversial I haven't seen it yet I haven't seen it yet oh that was a fucking British joke fuck you Giga. but like I'm kidding um I heard that the ending was very controversial people were not happy with it a lot of spicy drama Aaron Yeager probably attack on Titan ended this year and the internet had Opinions. Yeah. If you only browse Twitter, you might have thought half the people either think this was a masterpiece ending. No flaws, 10 out of 10, we all won, we all lost. Aaron and then the other side. Bird. Or the sending ruined the series, ruined the characters, made the entire show pointless, spat on the yeah. legacy of everything he had done. No one's going to remember Attack on Titan now. Aaron is a bird. Today. Was it that bad? Like Game of Thrones had an incredibly bad ending that just ruined everything. Uh, leading up to like season like six or something near the end, it was really great when they had book material to cover, but the ending pretty much ruined it. Was Attack on Titan the same? We're going to talk about 
how to stop smoking crack. Now with real people I've actually talked to, the consensus seems to be that this was a satisfying conclusion that did okay. everything it needed to do. I had my slight nitpicks with the execution of this ending, but absolutely none of it took away from my love for this series as a whole. What Attack on Titan has achieved and the impact it's had on the global reach of anime is something that will go down in history as all one right. of the defining shows of this era. This might not be my favorite ending of all time, but it is certainly the ending to one of my favorite anime of all time. So this show, I remember back in like 2012, I believe that was like, didn't this air on the same time Sword Art Online also aired? That season sounds fucking cracked now that I look back, but people were talking a lot about it. And I never knew what the fuck it was. Mainstream media was covering 2013. My bad. I think like if you watch like Phil DeFranco around on YouTube, you know, the, the YouTube news guy, even he was fucking talking about it. And I'm like, what the fuck is this anime, dude? So for one last time, thank you. Attack on Titan. Only okay. those around now will know that feeling of after years of waiting through final seasons of final parts. Dude, that's the thing. Attack on season, final season. Actually, final season core two. Actually, final season part one. Actually, final season part two. And I'm like, fuck it, just give me a fucking movie to end it to them. Like, why are you delaying it after delays? The final episodes. 2023 was part that three, time part two. Oh my god. This was the final bit of Attack on Titan we'll ever get to sell. Oh, god damn it. Wait, what? What? Of Attack on Titan we'll ever get to sell. Attack on Titan manga return with new chapter. Wait, what? Attack on Titan manga. It was set to return with a brand new chapter April 30th, 2024. In two months, in like almost three months. What? Wait, the new chapter uh, will consist of 18 pages and will be released alongside an illustration? What's it gonna do? Is, is it a rewrite of the fucking ending or are they having... <laughs> they're doing Boruto? No shot, they're doing Boruto way. Dude. No shot. What, did Eren and fucking Mikasa get a kid and now the kid's gonna fucking be the main character? What is this shit? God damn it. <laughs> Number seven is... An anime that I have no clue about. Okay, rom-com it looks like. Sometimes you just need a dose of wholesomeness to brighten up your day. But All being right. a dude watching anime can sometimes feel like... So what anime have you been watching? Oh, I'm watching this anime called Skip and Loafer and it's just one of the most cute and adorable... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pussy? Weak? Rom-com? Slice of life? Are you even a man? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, you catch the latest episode of Jujutsu Kaisen at all? <laughs> there was nothing in 20... <laughs> That's right, you gotta talk about... Oh yeah, I love Jujutsu Kaisen. Nah, I went. Nah, I went. No, I would never watch a slice of life. What are you talking about? 23 that made me come out of every episode feeling as good as Skip and Loafer did. This shit was a weekly injection of sunshine into my veins. I mean, just look at this opening alone. The mm. colors, the vibes, the catchy song, this goddamn dance. It's mm. enough to make any grown-ass man internally scream... Ah! See, I can't watch shit like this because I need to be like mad when I watch anime, right? Because like watching anime to me is like therapy because I, I like to like lash out and scream at mob characters and side characters, NPCs. I, have, I like to have personal beef with these fictional 2D characters because that is what gives me fulfillment. I think it's funny content. Slice of Life unfortunately doesn't have much, too much of that. This is so cute. Hey, 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 hey. Fuck yeah, violence. I'm yeah, dude, just a kaifen, yeah. It's about as straightforward as you can get. A country bumpkin moves to the big city and adjusts to her new high school life. It doesn't need any complex plot because it exudes this air of authenticity that makes you feel so goddamn good. It's rare to find an anime as genuine as this one because when I say high school life, I don't mean your typical cutesy anime high schoolers that are like, <laughs> These are teenagers. <laughs> Real teenagers. Just Real teenagers, guys. To the fullest. No melodrama, no overly anime bullshit. This is youth and adolescence. That is just real life? Without feeling like it's been put through some moe anime filter. No anime tropes. It's just real high school shit, okay? There's just something so endearing about that. Okay, I got my nutter. Why would I be interested in teenagers? Look, as a certified man, wait, that's... <laughs> One more time? <laughs> about that. Okay, I got my nutter. Why would I be interested in teenagers? Warning, my man! Jesus, he even laughs at his own line right after this. Look, as a certified man, wait, that line sounded really wrong. Look, as a certified man, baby, pretending to be a grown up, let me tell you, adulting okay. sucks. We yes, I agree. Jobs, we have responsibilities. We yes. have goddamn taxes. So basically, watching this is a way to relive this fantasy, right? When you're a kid and all your responsibilities are getting your homework fucking done and trying to see if you got invited to the recent party, the cool kid with the cool kids, like, Life is pretty easy, man. 
Life is pretty fucking easy. You don't got to worry about bills. You don't have to think about this looming, you know, economic recession. You don't have to think about, do I need to upskill and change the industry? Do I need to pay the bills? And you don't have to think about, oh, shit, I'm getting older and, and my partner is too. Is it too late for us to have a kid? You don't really get to think about, oh, damn, my parents are aging every time I go see them now. They're about to die soon. You don't think about this shit because you're a kid. And when you're a kid, all you think about is just fucking playing Maple Story all night long before you go to school in the morning. And life is just simple. Life is just so easy back then. When you're a kid, you don't recognize that. But when you grow up, you definitely do. Like, being a kid is like the tutorial, right? It's like the, it's like the, what's it called? It's like the free demo. And then after you graduate and join the workforce, <laughs> that's like the real game. <laughs> Not very fun. Sometimes you yearn for a time when life was simpler and more straightforward. And maybe that time is romanticized. Maybe yeah. you're looking back at that time through nostalgia glasses. But whether you are or you aren't, you'll never know because we'll never be able to get that time back again. Ever. And it's the- Or you could watch an isekai show that- that has a main character that does that so you can live through that fantasy or, or you could just watch this I guess Those little moments those simple times you cherish and reminisce about that this show encapsulates perfectly Like there's this one scene where our main girl comes home for the first time during her summer break She stayed up way too late catching up with her friends and slept in but nice. it's alright Her mum's taken the day off and she has the whole summer ahead of her So on this boiling hot That is so cozy already this premise is so cozy Her mum slices her up a water Slowed, slows down to a Mom, are you serious? You lazy piece of shit. You dare put the fucking seeds in the watermelon? Are you even a proper mom? I'm just kidding. We'll crawl as we see her just taking a moment to enjoy this watermelon while the sounds of summer ring on in the background. The same cicada sound effect. Yeah. Just countryside SFX. <laughs> wow, very peaceful. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna lie, this is definitely an anime that you would watch by yourself in peace by turning your brain off. This is not an anime that you would seek out a reaction for. It would just not be good reaction content. And just like that, her summer was over. Number six! Hmm? When anime wants you to feel heavenly delusion, right? Or sad, it goes. Oh Jesus! When anime wants you to know one of its characters is crazy, it goes. <laughs> when anime is trying to hint at something important, it's like. It was me. Subtlety in anime is using a chainsaw to dice an onion. But what happens when a show comes along that treats you like you have the IQ that Rick and Morty fans say they do? You hmm. get heavenly delusion. Here is a. We didn't get to see much of it because many people were not too interested in my community for this show. But based off of episode one, it seemed like a very interesting. I don't even know. Because like these, there's like these two humans and it seems like a post-apocalyptic world. And they're fighting these monsters. But then you have these other humans that look like these normal humans that are in this like facility where they're like being trained for something. It was very interesting. It's a show that doesn't take you by the hand and lead you, but leaves you to discover the story oh. on your own. It drops you into this insane world, gives you a hand-drawn scribble of a map and says, figure it out yourself. It's mm -hmm. episode one. Boom. We see a duo exploring a ruined Tokyo that gets in some kind of altercation with some bandits. All right, you get the idea. It's some post-apocalyptic world. People are fighting for survival and, uh... Would you look at that? Oh, I am. And I like what I see. What are you ladies doing? You're praying this doesn't happen. <laughs> what are you ladies doing? <laughs> bald! 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 That! Oh, I am. And I like what I see. What are you ladies doing? You're praying this doesn't have the ugly bastard tag on it. The girl brings out a gun like this and immediately gears start turning. Wait, is this some sci-fi world shit? Or Laser is that a damn Fisher-Price toy, you think? The bandits start attacking anyway and they fight back. So you're like, ah, oh, okay. Maybe she was just bluffing. So this is just a No, she's not. Article. She's not. Laser. Yeah, she not fucking around. Uh -huh. Gun uh -huh. In a single scene, the show has set up its world, got you asking questions, played with your expectations, answered your question, left you needing more answers, Bald. all without directly telling you a goddamn thing. 
This is Heavenly Delusion for all 13 episodes. This had one of the most intriguing worlds of any show this year, but trusted you to piece everything together yourself. There is no wasted scene, no out of character moment. Everything is a possible puzzle piece that clues you into the bigger picture. What happened to this world? Why are there nightmarish creatures that are eating people? What kind of sick experimentations is going on behind the scenes? Were you paying Who attention knows? even now? Because you just saw a random drawing of a fish with legs that looks oddly like this horrific thing. Yep. And the real question is, did you see a connection without me saying and did you see a connection between these two characters, the main characters outside the fucking facility and the two characters inside the facility, right? What is that? Only by watching intently do you realize how many crumbs are hidden in plain sight. You get given enough to get a rough idea, but never enough to see the full picture. And it's that unknown that makes this world as intriguing as it is goddamn terrifying. By the end, we've only just seen a slice of the larger whole, but it's so refreshing to see an anime that will have your neurons firing in a way where you don't have to worry about watching with headphones on for once. Oh, oh. You know, <laughs> hey, yo. most of the time. Number five. Apothecary Diaries, I think. Right? Yeah. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. One, one second, one second. I, my fucking headphones keep doing this. This is really annoying. One second, guys. Sorry, 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 sorry. Go back. Number five. Why is it doing this right now? I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, guys. There is a fucking issue. Let me change headsets. Fuck me. So annoying. <laughs> Alright, give it to me. Where did the sound go, dude? What the fuck happened to the sound? Hello? That are eating people. Need both the carry Dari's. No, oh! He, me he got me. Oh, it wasn't me. Fuck! I got baited! It's Gigok's video that got copyright fucking cl Motherfucker made me change headsets for fucking nothing! I, that's not even my fault. No, that's not even my fault. That's Gigok's fault, dude. Gigok fucking got claimed with copyright there. He had to mute his own fucking video, dude. Nah, that's bullshit. Nah, that's bullshit. See? The, the volume's- that volume- <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Apothecary Diaries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright. Come on. Um, I don't want to watch these Chinese cartoons, but in 2023, anime went, all right, but what if we had Chinese cartoons? Yeah, with waifu. Japan. <laughs> Apothecary Diaries is an anime that takes- <laughs> Chinese cartoons. <laughs> but Japan. <laughs> it's placed in ancient China, not China, in a palace setting that immediately reminded me of these badly dubbed Chinese soap operas like- The palace setting is insane. Like, do you understand what the premise of this show is? It's basically a palace of just MILFs, right? You have the emperor, you have a Chinese emperor, and everyone in the palace is either women that only serves to have his babies or be servants, and the only men allowed in the palace must get, like, castrated, right? They're eunuchs, so that they can't have babies with other people. Like, it's just a palace of concubines. That's a fucking insane concept. It reminded me of these badly dubbed Chinese soap operas I sometimes walk into my mum watching as a kid. At the beginning, I didn't fully realize what the big hook of this show was. Was it the House MD style medical detective stories? Was it mm. the historical drama surrounding the palace politics? I think a lot of people love Mau Mau, right? They love the, the unique setting of these Chinese cartoon, but Japan, right? They, they love the unique setting. It's not some random isekai for like the 77th time and Mau Mau has been a delight like she's very cunning she's very fun she's not just like some regular like simp either yes but on top of that it has simply put the best female character we could yes. find all year and sometimes that's all it takes for far too long anime seems to think we want only one thing and it's this no <laughs> how about nothing more than just a well-written believable compelling female protagonist yay, 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 yay. And Yay. this, Mau Mau is a character that deserves to be- Well, it's like, yeah, you could put in the effort to write a character like Mau Mau, or you could just show titties. ...in the running for one of the best protagonists we saw in 2023, and was such a breath of fresh air to see. Her presence was overpowering without conforming to what a lot of shows seem to think a good female character is. It's not that she's not like other girls, or premium waifu bait, or a strong female character trademark. She's just... A girl. A well-written, yeah. believable one that doesn't forget that she's a person first before- Like, not a single time. You, you know how he just made the reference to this Marvel movies right here, right? He's not like other girls or like premium right here. waifu bait or a strong female- Like, Hollywood has basically just shoved down this representation down our throat of very strong female leads that 
there's nothing wrong with a, like a female lead, but they do it in such an unnatural, like ingenuine way where it comes off fake and very just like, it, it's just not natural. But Mau Mau, there's never been a point where I thought that they're trying to like, I don't know, do this for the sake of representation, doing for this for the sake of like better female leads, right? I've never thought of it like that because she's just smart. Female character trademark, she's just... A girl, a well-written, believable one that doesn't forget that she's a person first before being just another girl. She doesn't have to be unfeminine to find the overly flirtatious attitude of some pretty boy unappealing. This she man can whore. not be your typical waifu bait and still absolutely slay when she needs to. She's not strong because she can beat up a hundred guys, but because she's headstrong in her own values and beliefs. Here is a clever realist who acknowledges her place in the palace hierarchy, but isn't afraid to throw hands when shit needs to get done. Oh! oh yeah, my girl just factory reset. I did not watch that episode. Throw hands when shit needs to get what? done. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in in the context right of that episode, she pro that 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 girl probably did something wrong and probably ended up like I don't know, posting somebody, right? What the fuck? Throw hands when shit needs to get done. One more time. Done. <laughs> Damn, my girl just factory reset that bitch. Seeing Mao Mao passionate. Factory reset that bitch. Does Gary just like? Where does he come up with these jokes? Does he just think of these one-liners in the shower? Like, what does he do? He <laughs> solved these medical mysteries while asserting a fucking oh. dominance all over the palace politics made this such a compelling watch. And hopefully more shows will be able to take notes of great characters like this. Number four. Pluto. Yo, these are some big brain shows that it's funny how like the the uh, anime that's getting recommended as like the top rankings, right? Are like the enemies that had to be dropped because it didn't perform on our channel because our channel again is just a bunch of <laughs> brain dead isekai enjoyers. <laughs> kind of sad when Eminence and Shadow didn't even make it into top 10. <laughs> right, did it? Eminence and Shadow was like 11, right? No, 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 no. I mean, Shadow was nine. Never mind. It did make it top ten, but I heard that Pluto was like a very good show, like actually, like objectively great shows, which may not be the best for reactions, but I don't know. Let's see what Pluto is. Appreciating the statue of David up close. He, he definitely censored that cock right there. Did you guys know that? Like, is this ancient Roman or ancient Greek? Anyways, I heard that y you see the statues and the and the cock is really small, right? Back then, having like a huge dong was a sign that you are a brute, that you are a savage, that you are a simpleton, a grug, an absolute caveman hog, right? So that's why these statues back then were depicted with dudes with like tiny microcock, because like apparently that meant that you were like sophisticated and intelligent. I hear that's the lore. Like, I'm not sure if that's true, but that's what I hear. Close. Getting to see Lionel Messi dribble past five players. Watching Jack Nicholson command every scene he's in. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is. It's always enthralling to see an absolute master of their craft at work. And that's the okay. exact feeling I get whenever I get to see anything written by Naoki Urasawa. And Pluto was absolutely no. Naoki Urasawa is like a really famous director, writer. He just has like that reputation for anything he produces is godlike. Exception. Okay. He created a robot that was perfect. There are only a few mangaka that can boast such a legendary status as Urasawa mm. himself. When you okay. have a track record of titles like Monster, an absolute masterpiece with arguably the greatest villain anime has seen. 20 really? Century Boys, not just my favorite manga of all time, but one of my favorite pieces of fiction to exist. Pluto Never read it. One of his weaker works, according CGI. to CGI fans. And goddamn, if this is him operating at his lowest potential, this is like sending in your weakest fighter, and that fighter turns out to be Gojo fucking Satori. <laughs> Wait, really, that's the plot? Yeah, that analogy checks out. Monsters and muscle. Is this the author of Monster? The monster, the highly acclaimed, like the, the perfect fucking anime ever, other than Legend of the Galactic Heroes? This is the guy who wrote Monster? Oh, I see, I see. This has all the calling cards of a classic Urasawa tale. He said. Oh! Then I know for a fact that this show will not perform on my channel because it's way too big brain and sophisticated and objectively good. It's not a shit isekai. It's the stage, a sci-fi world where humans and robots coexist. A series okay. of unsolved murders, a detective that is missing part of his memories, a robot that has done the impossible and taken a human life. He hooks you into his world and leaves you with a single question when the first episode ends. Just how deep 
does this rabbit hole go? The man's ability to construct a mystery and captivate an audience through his mastery of suspense to me has the same level of craftsmanship as seeing a master blacksmith make a legendary sword. Every episode is so dense with emotion, a plot that will keep you guessing through all the twists and turns, sitting on top of the sheer thematic depth of the story that every single character carries on their Gigak is glazing the sky like no fucking other, he must be the real deal. Back. And by the end of it all, he'll leave you with these ideas that you'll be thinking about far after the credits huh. roll. This is some of the finest storytelling you can find anywhere. If I had to really? make a guess why this didn't make as big of an impact as it probably should have, well this- Cuz, not a shitty isekai, and it just doesn't probably appeal to the modern anime audience, it's, it's too objectively good. This was an adaptation of a sci-fi manga that was written 20 years ago. Yeah, it's too old. It was originally a reimagining of Asteroid Boy, a manga that came out 60 years ago. So, inevitably, there might be some aspects that feel a bit dated. What's this? A war involving the invasion of some Middle Eastern country predicated on the possible developments of robots of mass destruction? Hmm. <laughs> oh, hey, there's a guy called Adolf. Hmm. He's a bad guy. Good. No, it's not Adolf. It's Adolfu. With you more, my dear Adolf. But along with a slightly lukewarm ending, this doesn't take away from the legacy of one of the greatest mangakas alive right now. So I have one question left: Are we ready to attempt a 20th century boys anime? Is 20th century anime is 20th century really that good? He just hyped up the manga like crazy. So like, again, when I say that, like. I understand that there are great animes, great objectively well-written animes. And when I talk about how it doesn't perform on my channel, I'm not saying that like it's a bad anime. I'm just saying that we are bad, right? We are monkeys over here in this, cha in this channel, right? We monkeys cannot appreciate art like this, this sophisticated art. We don't know what to do with it. You know, we need to see big titties and isekai hype power fantasy. Number three is... Nah, I'd win, baby! Hell yeah! <laughs> when you watch an action anime, you normally go through a season where you might see a ton of great action, but you know it all builds up to this one, or at most two episodes where the production values skyrocket and you're treated to this insanely animated fight that will drop your jaw to the floor. These are the scenes that everyone remembers and defines the top mm -hmm. fights of the year. Now, what if every episode was like that kind of episode? Mr. Kaisen went, how about we do that? Yeah, every For episode. Every episode. I don't think I've ever quite experienced the collective adrenaline-filled ride Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 has given me. You put on an episode and be watching some of the sickest shit that's ever been put on screen, and you think to yourself, there's no way they could ever top this. And it's at that moment, the show will look you dead in the eye and go, I'll fucking go do even it beyond. again. And then it yeah. does. Again and again. And again. I can't believe they fucking like, off-screen Fuga, dude. Put like on screen, And you think to yourself, there's no way they could ever top this. And it's at that so moment, good. the show will look you dead in the eye and go, I'll fucking do it again. And then it does. They fucking just off screen this shit. Yo, I, I think that Jogo versus Sukuna, maybe people don't think it was one of the better fights. I thought it was fucking hype. I thought Jogo versus Sukuna was fucking lit because like Jogo is a like like if you if you think if you look at this character from season one, would you have ever expected this character to be important? No, you think that he's a fucking clown. You think that he's a fucking random NPC, but it turns out he's actually one of the strongest curses fucking ever. This dude is an actual fucking king, dude. Well, he's not the king of curses, but like he's like the strongest curse, right? So Skuna is like the king of curses, but like isn't Jogo literally just like called his title is like the strongest curse? He, like he survived the strongest modern sorcerer's uh, domain expansion, right? A one hit kill, a surefire kill from Gojo Satoru. Not once, but fucking twice. This dude, 1v3, who was it? Fucking Nanami, Maki, Zenin clan leader, right? What, did, what, what else did he do? This dude single-handedly resurrected Skuna through those fingers. This dude single-handedly then challenged Skuna and even got a duel offered. Fucking fought. And this dude then got recognition from the King of Curses saying, Stand proud. You're strong. Like, you're telling me this random volcano looking ass dude that I was clowning on in season one was that important? Yeah, and that's what I love about this character. Yes, and it's at that moment the show will look so you epic. dead in the eye and go, I'll fucking do it again. And then it does. Again and again and again and again and again and again. So many amazing moments. So many sick ass scenes. Midway through the season, the hype got to me and I excitedly tweeted out, it should be goddamn illegal for an anime to go this hard. That yeah. was the same day all this came out. Oh boy, well... Just like humanity, everything of the greatest human invention has been banked off of slavery. 
And just like that, MAPPA continues to do the same. Bro, the amount of workplace harassment, the workplace like um, mistreatment, the abuse that these MAPPA employees get, it sounds like they are working 25 hour days and it's not enough. MAPPA's working conditions continue to unravel as animators highlight growing concerns with long working hours, low pay, and too many projects. And this is the this is the issue what happens with um asian culture that has a bunch of people that are very subservient to this um you know respect your elders don't talk to your seniors you're not very individualistic you just kind of lick the corporate boot you don't try to unionize the basically the working side of the force has no leverage to kind of like negotiate better pay because there's no unions and because this is an industry banked on passion meaning it, they don't give a fuck if you quit there's 10 other dudes that'll just be waiting outside the door waiting for you to quit that'll work for even less pay so when you have a situation like this everyone fucking loses except the corporations it sucks it, it just really sucks one of the biggest talking points has been mappa's treatment of their animators during the season and i think it's a testament to the blood sweat and tears poured into this that we got mm -hmm. a product this fantastic despite the hellish working conditions they were going through demon slayer and the fucked up thing is the average consumer does not give a fuck about how MAPPA's employees are being treated. Sure, there's some videos on YouTube talking about this, but do you think the average Jujutsu Kaisen fan that watches and goes, Hoo -hoo, Gojo Satoru Go Domain Expansion, so cool. Do you think they give a shit? Do, they, do you think they even understand, you know, what's happening behind the scenes? No, because the consumer just cares about the product at the end of the day. And if it's good, then it's great. And that's why MAPPA will keep getting away with this. Unless they start to like brigade together and just fucking leave and you know, like label and brand this company is like a black company. It's just really sad. Yeah, yeah. Mob Psycho, this may not have gotten the opportunity to be as polished as shows like that, but it is unmatched when it comes to its raw stylistic flair. Every single fight has a unique identity not constrained to one genre of action. We got gritty hand-to-hand -hand combat, city-wide disaster level brawls, insanely unique powers, idol dance beatdowns. There was a mecha fight, a fucking mecha fight there in was. a shonen anime. The amount yep. of hype, the amount of fucking sheer disrespect. We got fucking rabbits throwing hands. This Dude, the rabbits were fucking sick. One of the greatest showcases I've ever seen of, for lack of a better term, fucking Ooh. cool shit. This felt like the purest celebration of fight scenes and choreography. We were in the audience. They got to marvel at a symphony of some of the coolest set pieces you can find in the medium. The Shibuya arc may not have been peak storytelling or the peak of all shonen arcs. But in terms of just fights... Like every episode was just go, 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 go. Peak fight after peak fight after peak fight, dude. But right now, this is the peak of action spectacle. Yes. <laughs> Number two on this list is... The way L... Freedom is not number one? What the fuck? Well, I, I don't want to spoil... What could possibly be number one if he put Frieden as number two? You see this world. Oh, I know what's gonna be number one. It's gonna be I got a cheat skill from another world. I definitely yep, it, that's the anime, guys. I thank you, Freeran. Classroom of the Elite? You I don't think Classroom of the Elite season two did happen in 2023. That's crazy. Classroom of the Elite didn't even make it to the fucking list. Ragna Crimson? No, it's gonna be fucking Berserk of Gluttony on number one if you think that Ragna Crimson's No! All these anime trash, dude! Mushoku Tensei? Did he not talk about Mushoku Tensei earlier? He talked about the erectile dysfunction arc, didn't he? No, he talked about during the intro, I believe. He just talked about that for a brief section in the intro. Oh no, that much didn't even air. This retired hero could have one final adventure. Himel. Free Ren opens on the story of an elf girl who takes for granted the time she has with the people around Boomer her. Boomer elf. Decades pass in the blink of an eye. Her companions age, and before she has the chance to fully get to know them, they're gone. It's a regretful, poignant tale that shoots straight to your goddamn soul. Too fucking real. Existential crisis right off the bat. You start to ask yourself, damn, maybe I should call my friends. Maybe I should call my parents, you know. Goddamn. It's, it's sad. It's, it's, it's so sad. It's just... That's reality though. What are you gonna do? You just gotta move on. And then the opening's like... Yeah, yeah, what the fuck is this fucking... Okay, because like Yaozobi, basically, or is it Yaozobi, the, the people that did Oshinoko um, Idol opening did the same opening for Frieden. So it's like, what the fuck? I'm trying to cry. I'm, like the anime makes you want to cry in like episode one to four, but then the opening is fucking lit. I don't know, man. 
The show took a different approach to fantasy adventure while encapsulating everything that the genre is about. There might not be any demon lord to defeat or world to save, but instead we have a journey about appreciating the smaller things in your life. The beautiful things you might have missed if you forgot to look for them. I showed this to a mate and he was like, Free Ren? You mean mm. Side Quest, the anime? And I bloody ate. Side Quest, the anime. It's kind of right. I mean, half the fucking show is about traveling from point A to point B. But then, it's all about the shit that happens on the way to point A to point B, right? Now, we are getting some peak fucking academy, like, selection, like, uh, insurance exam arc right now. But, well, it's like a, it's more like a driver's license test exam, right? But, like, there are definitely some episodes where it feels very episodic. And the formula is basically, you're going to one place, and it's like some side quests. And some of the theme of the side quests will, will make Frieden remember about either Heiter, Himmel, Eisen, you know. And, they'll be, and then she'll remember, like, a story from back then, and she'll, like, relive it, and then that's pretty much it right I, I enjoy the formula but sometimes i do wish there was an overall goal some kind of structure that we're working towards which is happening right now in season two because of how fucking accurate that is yet it's through those detours you take along the road to your destination that free run absolutely shines it's the type of show that grips you without ever needing to hit you with any flashy high intensity action scenes to keep your attention but it can do the high intensity action scenes that's the thing it, it can do it and then it hits you with these flashy high intensity action scenes yeah one shot this series didn't need to go hard in this animation in any way shape or form but chooses to do so anyway this is what it's like to watch a fully oh, polished cold product. but like free Ren's own journey these are not the moments that stick with you for the world saving adventure she went on the slice of memories we get are those small moments that really defined the time she spent with her party and as she forms new bonds you start to see those small pieces she begins to pick up from the people around yeah her she's changing become a part of her this is what every fantasy tale aspires to be it's shows like these that somehow make you nostalgic for an experience you've never had friends mm. you've never made but at its heart it's a gentle reminder to cherish the things in your life that really matter to make the most of the time with the people you truly value <laughs> Dude, this scene, the way that Himmel fucking like put a ring on her was so sick. You know, in most animes, you watch it for like cool hype anime, like action scenes. To me, like this Himmel scene was just like that. And you know what? Sometimes people are too focused about moving forward. Sometimes people are too focused about the grind. You got to fucking grind, grind, and you got to move forward. You got to better yourself. And no doubt, that's a great thing to do. But sometimes if you're too focused on looking at the future, you kind of forget to enjoy the current present and eventually time will pass and you'll look bad and wonder was should i have like you know spent my time a little bit differently should i have kind of slowed down and enjoyed my moments it's the little things to think about number one shit he put freedom number two what the fuck is gonna be number one is spike's family run 2022 it can't be spike's family is it mucho kudensei Midland Saga the farm arc? No, it's not Midland Saga. It's Peakland Saga. I heard a lot of people kind of get upset about Midland Saga, but in terms of story writing, I bet it is deserving of number one, yeah? Look, 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 look. Everybody had complaints about Vinland Saga season one, season two because season one was all about hype Vikings, the story of Askeladd. You know, it was fucking amazing, right? People love that shit. But then when you suddenly pivot into season two, devoid of anything that you remember in season one it's like a totally different product so obviously people are gonna be upset but if you really look beyond that and try to understand the themes and the writing of the farm arc i've heard that people say that it's like one of the greatest writing of all time i, I don't fucking know i don't i i'm not trying to glaze this show i'm just trying to play a little bit of defense you know why vinland saga is number one you know i've killed so many people I will be reborn, and I will atone for all that I've done. That's all we've ever wanted. Something in this world that can give us a reason to keep going. Yeah. I saw a meme on TikTok or somewhere on Twitter, I think, and it was basically like bunch of people just like the, the picture is like a bunch of fucking like uh people just going so like oh 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 based to vinland saga and it's like vinland saga and the title is like vinland saga fandom be like when they watch their characters like move a fucking wheelbarrow or when they watch a character cut a tree or when they watch a character fucking you know pick the fucking rice grains off the farmland it's like that's what season it's not what season two was about but it is you know 
When I was a kid, my father would read me bedtime stories that my childish mind would always be absolutely immersed in. Okay. Accounts of hungry, hungry caterpillars, oh, I know that rainbow one. fishes, ugly ducklings. These were the greatest stories I'd ever heard, because they were. But it would always end off with a message, a seed that got planted in my head that would hopefully sprout into a lesson that would stick with me. And as you grow older, start learning new lessons by experiencing real life, you forget the effect that stories can have on you. Mm. A good story can not only entertain you, it can move you, give you a new perspective, teach you something you never knew you could learn that you can take far beyond the confounds of watching some piece of entertainment. And what is the lesson that Vinland Saga teaches us? That we have no enemies? That is the power of a great tale. And that is everything that Vinland Saga Season 2 encapsulates. Okay. I cannot begin to describe the sheer effects this show had on me. Season 1 was a compelling adventure filled with tragedy, vengeance, and violence. So to anyone coming into this season blind, you probably yeah. would have been... They're gonna be fucking pissed off because it's like, yo, season two is not what I watched season one for. Where is everything I watched Vinland Saga season one for? Back. The violence takes a back seat to a pure, methodical character drama. Vengeance has been replaced by a saga of redemption and acceptance. Honor, glory, sacrifice, all left by the wayside. And all that remains is people just trying their best to find their place in this merciless world. Mm -hmm. While most series would cower at the thought of shifting gears this drastically, it is that strong juxtaposition that gives Vinland saga's message the weight it has exemplified by possibly the greatest character development we've ever seen in this medium thorofin's transformation is something that transcends entertainment a man who starts off as a shell of a human broken empty unworthy of redemption but through every person he meets every relationship he forms he starts to learn to pick up the broken pieces of his former self right because i think he was like a super edgy kid in season one or some shit and then something happened at the end and in season two it's like a different place and now he's like, it's, it's, he's not castrated, but he's acting as if he just lost all balls, right? But it's not that he lost balls. It's the fact that he's like maturing and starting to really think about, you know, his father's teachings. Isn't, isn't that what's going on? That slowly but surely fill his soul up. As you see him encounter conflict, you'll secretly wish for that instant gratification that he'll revert back to his previous savage self. Revenge! And as you witness this journey of a man fighting so desperately to find peace, who learns that it's okay not just to forgive others, but to forgive himself as well, it becomes an experience that will linger with you and invites you to find your own solace. What- Basically, like, um... He doesn't want to kill, yeah. And I've seen a lot of like memes about Vinland Saga. Basically, the the TikTok. Imagine this, right? It's like a it's like a guy walking, and someone like bumps into you, and the guy's about to get angry, but the guy that's walking that got bumped into like dodges and like kisses him in the forehead and moves on. <laughs> and it's like because he has no enemies. It's like shit like that. Watching Vinland Saga feels like I'm getting read the greatest bedtime story ever told by my dad. It'll grip you with the purest of tales, packed with nothing but raw human emotion that will leave your heart filled to the brim. And by the end of it all, it gives you something, a message, a lesson it earnestly hopes you can take with you. You it have no enemies. That change isn't just something that exists in the boundaries of a fictional story. It doesn't come easy. It's a long, hard, unforgiving road, but you can get there, even if every day you only take one small step at a time. We will always find a reason to fight each other, no matter what time period we are in, weapons we can use, or hmm. tools we have at our disposal. But no matter how broken you think the world is, there is still meaning in trying to build a better tomorrow. Man, this is a, this, I know this is like the last portion of this video, so this is like a great outro to kind of tie in the theme of, you know, best anime 2023 and the last anime in Vinland Saga, and rightfully so, and then, you know, tying in like, we have no enemies, you know, anti-war, moving towards a better tomorrow with like the current, you know, things that's happening in our world right now. Maybe tomorrow I can make a brighter day come. Maybe tomorrow I can be just that little bit kinder. Maybe tomorrow I can become a slightly better version of myself. Damn. You are capable of letting go of that hatred. What a beautiful way to end the video. Towards yourself. You have God no damn. enemies. There's the line. You have no enemies. And ladies and gentlemen, that is the video. A decade of best anime. I love his content. You know what to do. 
We'd love to start, you know, support small content creators. He's only at 3.56 million subscribers, but with your help, I believe that he can reach 4 million. Do I agree with this list of animes? Honestly, I haven't seen them enough to be able to, you know, justify what's happening and because the content of our show is basically trashy isekai. I'm not sure, but I'm sure that these are great anime that you should definitely check out in your own free time. And that's it from me. Hope to see you soon on the next stream reaction.